Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world after having just finished gathering some quartz. We are literally in the same day, and I want to put this quartz to use and make some glass for our house, our brand new house. Okay, so full admission, I kind of goofed a little bit. And it turns out that we're going to have to temporarily bring back the clay firing area. Although I'm just going to do a smaller one, I think. And I'm not going to give it a full roof. I'm just going to sort of cover up each block individually. Much better. That is firing, and we have 18 hours to wait before that's done, and before we can keep going with our glass. I want to show you something else that involves another goof. I thought I was recording earlier, sort of between episodes, uh, gathering clips for what I'd done between episodes, and turns out that my recordings were not being saved, and yeah, that was a thing. So I found something while I was digging up that fire clay, and I wanted to show you what it was, and to take a look at it together. But that is going to require some armor and a shield. So yeah, I was digging out the fire clay over in this deposit right over here, and I started hearing some very nearby groans. You know the kind. And so I started digging, and here's where I thought I was recording, and I wasn't. And here is the entryway that I found into some kind of drifter-filled cave. And I thought we could spend some time exploring it. I mean, hey, why not, right? Oops. Hello, buddy. One, so you're still two hits. Oh, well. So it looks like we have two ways to go. Let's go... Tell you, let's light this up first, just down here. It's a dead end down there. And then we'll go down this way. Ooh. That's a... Ooh. That's a scary cave. Not gonna lie. That was a big scary cave. Let's do some surface exploration here first before we attempt any deeper dives. Oh, that goes up too. Oh, holy moly. These tunnels must be just below our house, too. Wow. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go up first. And, oh, this sort of loops over. Oh, I see. Okay. I don't see any telltale indicators of ruins, but uh, if you guys see one, shout. I'll hear you. Okay, so this is all just very open cave. Okay. Let's go back and explore downward this way first. Just to sort of get all of the higher up locations sorted out. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddies. Deep Drifters. These took, I think, what, six hits each time? So three, four, four hits now. Oh, nice. Done. So much faster. What is down here? Nothing. A whole lot of nothing. Okay. We are going to just block this off with some dirt. They can't get up here. Let's take a look in here. 
This could be interesting. Oh boy, two water sources. Wonderful. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to build us a safety rail. So that if we sort of end up careening over the edge while we're walking around in here up top, we don't just fall down to our deaths. Oop. And I guess it's all for our safety rail, isn't it? Well, shoot. Let's go back and get some more dirt. Okay. Dirt acquired. Let's go. Oh, hey, guys. Hello, hello. Three hits. Not bad. That's what we're talking about. And you guys just found the single dark corner in this whole place. Okay. There are two dark corners, technically. Okay, let's go down. There we go. Just toss you there. And we're going to inch our way down. And it looks like we have some quartz here. And a single block does not have a spot for us to put a ladder. And it looks like our stability is just now starting to take a hit. We're spinning backwards pretty slowly. And what have we here? We have yet again more down. You know what? I'm going to do what I should have done a minute ago and light our way back. So we have a lot more down. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and break this, and I'm going to do a bit of digging to get down, just because we're getting kind of low on ladders. I do have some more sticks, but if we can just dig down a bit, it might be a little better this time. Ooh, I heard that. There's someone groaning off to our right. Do I go down, or do I go right? goes down and down. Boy. Okay, tell you what, for now, I want to just sort of dig right, see if we can find whatever that drifter was groaning about. Yeah, I hear you, buddy. Yeah, we're getting closer, that's for sure. I'm going to block that off, just in case. Marco. They're bad at that. I don't think I'd be hearing them from much farther away than this. Let's look this way. I think it's still farther this way, actually. It could be above us a little bit, too. Okay, he's definitely to our left. I think he might be above us. Yeah, you're above us, aren't you? Oh, we're close now. Oh, there's water involved, too. Great. Who doesn't love that? Oh! I found it! Oh, there go our torches. Darn it. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, let's go and... I'm going to borrow this torch and light the rest of them again. Torches away. And tell you what, let's kind of go up here. I'm going to try to... Yes, I hear you, buddy. I hear you. Oh, crap. That's not great. But I can get up here.
Oh, oh, hey, look at this. It's another one of these caves, though. These sort of weird... Oh, good. Temporal storm. My favorite. Hey, buddy. Do, uh... Do you like arrows? Or do you prefer spears? Or would you rather have a sword? Take your pick. Bye. Okay, well that's interesting. And what do we have over here? Oh, this cape goes on a little bit, doesn't it? Neat. Okay, not that long. But it does go on. And I don't see any olivine here, like we did in the last one, but that was a pretty unique find. Well, let's dig into this wall here. A lot of rot. A couple of bones. And a great knife. Oh, we have a... Oh, this is an interesting one. I haven't seen you before. And tell you what, let's get in here and I'm going to plug... I'm going to do this. And we'll crawl in here. We're just going to plug this up. Ah, much better. Okay. So it looks like we have a bit of a hidey hole here. Someone tried to survive in this cave. I don't know how they got here. I mean, considering just how enclosed this place was. But I will take this cobblestone in case there's anything else here. And... Oh my. We have a humanoid carcass. And a hay bed. This guy did not die... well. So do we get anything from this? Or is this just a... Uh, just bones? Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Okay. Goodbye, torch. Got some more rot. And some bones and some sticks. And some spelt seeds. Boy, this guy doesn't have much for us. Now, these could be interesting. What do you... Oh, right. Oh, you metal spikes. Eh. I don't really care about you that much. Well, that's cute. Interesting. Not quite what I'm looking for. Not by a long shot. So I'll mark this here on my head. And at some point, we might come back to it. For now, let's head out here. Swap this around again. And, okay, we're getting a little low on stability here. And on ladders. Let's just get some sticks. Let's do some more ladders. Why not? And we will just go ahead and drop them here. As the scary music closes in on us. You just don't stop, do you? I hear more drifters. Once again, not in this cave, perhaps. Ooh, it's dark. Oh, there they are. Nightmare drifters. I think we don't want to be down this far just yet. But I'm going to take a peek down here just to see what we can see. Which isn't a whole lot. Okay. Well, yet another deep hole near our house with not a whole lot in it. Except for what could be down there, but we are not equipped to handle that. That's for sure. Well, let's head out of here. We'll dump our inventory. I will ride out this temporal storm in luxury. Or in a dirt hut, whichever. And then... We'll see where we're at with the glass. And now that it's over, let's go out and... Check on our bricks. Ah, good, they're done. Okay, let's pick them all up. And now we can make a whole bunch of bloomeries. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll fill them with quartz. And then we'll fill them with some charcoal. And 
this is why I have the big ol' 5x5x3 five by five by charcoal pit, which is starting to get nice and full, because when you start doing glass and iron and bloomeries, it gets used up fast. And we'll light them all up. And there we go. And what's it going to be? 10 or 16 hours? We should have uh, 12 by 8, so 96 question mark blocks of glass. And then we'll put them where they go. And actually, while I'm in here cleaning up, I forgot that I did a little bit of penning last night, and we got another book. So let's give it a read. We got Return Part 2 of 2. So there's the first one we read before, and here is the second one. Okay, so I may have gotten a little carried away with chopping trees down and making more firewood for charcoal. We're still calm, but it looks like our glass is all done here. And I think that last time we made glass, we didn't have a pickaxe. But now that we do, I should note that it is faster to break these with a pickaxe than by hand. Now granted, with a copper pickaxe, maybe not that much faster. And this might be just confirmation bias, but I sort of seem to have noticed that if you break the tops first and then the bottoms, you sort of seem to get more blocks back. I don't know if that's true, but it does feel like it. And there we go. A whole ton of glass. So let's get in here and let's turn some of this glass into leaded glass panes. And you know what? I think I'm just going to go ahead and use up all this lead, because I think even with all this, we might end up being a little short. And as promised, I had threatened to use walnut for the frames, and so that's what we're going to do. A stack and a quarter of lead paned glass with walnut frames. And I think I have a little more lead in one of our containers, and I do know there are a few places that still have lead that we haven't really tapped yet. Let's go ahead and we'll start with these guys. Get all of you in. All this first floor stuff. I haven't punched a window in this wall yet, and I will eventually. But that won't happen today, so we have some time. So let's go ahead and see, 4, 8, 16, and then 12, so 28. See, we have enough. Great. There. Already looking much better. Now, I believe I promised you folks some detail work on the house, and while the windows are, you know, technically detail work, that's not really what I think I meant, and I think you might be disappointed if I walked away with just doing the windows in the house. Now, we're going to do a little bit more than that. I want to pay some attention to these corners, and I want to work on some window dressing as well. And for that, I have brought our good friend, the chisel. So, I have a couple things I want to do. One is that I want to give this a walnut wood sill, as well as some granite dry stone trim. And for these windows down here that aren't immediately under an overhang, I want to give them little awnings. And I want to start with, let's do the awnings first, why not? So what I'm thinking is that we're going to come here and stand there. There we go. And I want to have the bottom of the awnings here. And then we'll do... That. And what we can do then is we can turn each of these into chiseled blocks. Bam, 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 and bam. And we're going to shrink this down. 
and we're going to first sort of round these off and make our ladder taller. There we go. So we're going to round these off a little bit. And then like that. There we go. That way we can have a, a smooth, well, a smooth stair-steppy slope down to the edges here. These don't need to go the whole way out either. So let's do a bit of that. And we'll do the same thing over here. Okay, there's our basic shape. And then we come in here and we're going to carve out the bottom of this a little bit so that it's not so thick. Then I want to bring in just a little bit more right here. There we go. Let's hop down and take a look at that. Got this stuff in the way. Yeah, there we go. That's not too bad. I might come back in a little later and sort of tinker with it, but I think it's a pretty good start. I could even maybe move it lower, but that might then bump into what we're going to do around the trim. Let's get back up there. So for this trim, I have a couple things in mind. On the outside, I want the granite dry stone, and on the inside, I want this to be a walnut trim. So let's start from the outside and we're going to turn each of these blocks here and surrounding the window into a chisel block. And now we're going to go ahead and add... Oop! I don't like that. <laughs> Just place one in, please. So, and I'll bring you back when this is all done. Okay, so all 12 of these blocks are now prepared. We can pick the granite dry stone. And I'm just going to replace all this around here with that. In fact, you know what? I might pop this out a little on some of these areas. So we'll just go all out here. And actually, this is going to be wood at the bottom. Because we're going to have a wooden sill here. There we go. Let's pick the plaster, and we're going to shrink this down again. Do I like that, or do I want it? Well, we'll see how it looks. Looks a little too round. Let's sort of square it off just a little bit. I still want it to be slightly rounded, but not quite this much. There we go. And then we can come in here, replace this plaster, and pop this slab in here. And then we can add the actual sill that sticks out. And we'll just chop this down like so. And then there we go. We have our sill. So let's go on the inside and finish up this window. I'm thinking the inside will be somewhat simpler because it's going to be all wood trim. So let's just go ahead and pick the walnut slab and we will do this. And there we go. We now have one window done. And after we figure out what's going to go in this room, I may come in and put a little tiny lip on this sill sticking out. But I think when you get into really fine work like that, that sticks out from a wall, that can get in the way of things you might want to place in front of the window. So if we wanted to put a non-chiseled table here or some of any other non-chiseled block, that would get in the way of this sill sticking out. So I might just leave it flat for now. Now, I want to move on for now to a different part. I want to shore up and smooth out this little bump right here. So we're going to come in here and we are going to throw a slab right there. 
into there. And then we're going to cut that away. And there, that is immediately better. And we'll do that on all of these roof corners here. So there we have that. And then the last thing I want to do today is I want to show you what we're going to do on these corners here. I want to put some brickwork on these corners, like so. And done. Perfect. Excellent. That's all, folks. I'll see you next time. No, just kidding. Just kidding. I wouldn't do that to you. Now, what I want to do with these is I want to shave these down. And I want to make them really, really thin. Just like this, and then even thinner. So that gives us this very thin block to work with. And then, wherever the texture has a line here, fresh brick, I want to remove any bricks that are on the flat side of the wall. Or to say, the bricks that are closer to the plaster. So this brick is one whole one, so we'll leave that whole thing. This one here can just go. And then around the edges, I want to just sort of round these off a bit, make them a little less harsh. And we'll come and do this corner as well. Like so. So when all is said and done, we'll have this sort of brick bracing on the corner the whole way up. Now, this is going to be a tedious process, and there is a way we can speed that up with one of the mods we have. You know what? Let's just knock that out too. Goodbye. So it is time for another mod showcase. I brought along some junk wood here. And with this junk wood, we can make the extended workbench. This is a mod that allows you to copy chisel blocks in survival. Normally you can't do that. You have to do each one manually, and we have been so far. But for some of this work, especially repetitive stuff like doing all these windows, we can just take these blocks out temporarily, put them in here, and then it will do some of the work or all the work for us, depending on how far we go with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop one of these on the ground, and we're going to shave it down to a sliver. Okay, we have our sliver, and this is the kind of sliver that we were using on our wall over here. You'll see it's the same thickness. There we go. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put it into this workbench. So we need a chisel to copy the blocks, and then we need the materials, more stone bricks. And then we just hold down right click, and that's a brand new sound. And it will work through this, and boy that is an annoying sound. And shortly we'll have a whole bunch of these sort of flat stone brick pieces. It should be noted that when you're doing this, you'll see the chisel durability is dropping pretty rapidly. And that's because for each copy operation, it will use 20 durability per material that is used in the chisel block. So here, each of these uses 20 durability only because we have a single block type in this chisel block. So if we had, let's say we were going to go and copy, say, one of these blocks. We have the plaster, we have the dry stone, and we have the walnut. So that would be 60 durability for each block. So there is a balancing act to be had here. Goodbye. Okay. So I'm going to go make us a new chisel, and we're going to finish these out. Okay, that's over. That really is a kind of unbearable sound, not going to lie. Okay, and we're just going to slap these on here. And you'll notice, obviously, that these are placed kind of at a funny angle. But that isn't a problem, because with the chisel, we can rotate. And by left-clicking with the rotate option on, we can rotate it. I believe that's top to bottom is clockwise. And then right-clicking is counterclockwise. So 
we're going to go ahead and just lay these all out here. And these float magically. Do these corners too. And then we are going to need to combine these chisel blocks together. So let's go ahead and... Oh, that scared me. <laughs> Stupid torches. <laughs> And let's sort of, and let's get up there, we can reach it. There we go. I'm gonna grab you, I'm gonna grab you, and we're going to just drop you in here. Now unfortunately, we are going to lose out on that flattening, so I probably could have just used a full-size brick block now that I think about it, and I think it will do that for the next set. But I'm going to go ahead and start getting all these chiseled in here. And there we have one brick corner chiseled on our house. Only 5,000 more to go. Now this is likely to be a several hours long project, so I may sort of peck at it as time permits, because this is going to be a several hours long project, and I haven't even started the second floor. And I probably won't get to that even for the next few episodes just because we still have to get the materials for the plaster. But I will sort of work on it over the course of a few episodes, sort of in the background between episodes while I'm having some downtime, and just get all this filled out. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed our little adventure in adding detail to our house before we move into it. I'm definitely looking forward to that eventual move-in, as well as to see how this turns out. It's been sort of in my head for quite a while now, almost since the moment we moved up to this ridge here. Anyway, as always, my name has been Corazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.